In this lesson, we're going to look at some characteristics of parabolas. We're going to learn how to draw a parabola without having to plug in all different x's and, and generate a whole bunch of points. So first of all, let's remember that all quadratic functions graph parabolas. And by quadratic, I mean something that has an x squared term. So any function that contains an x squared term and nothing higher is going to graph a parabola. And a parabola basically looks like this. It's kind of a U-shaped or a bowl-shaped graph. And it has a place where it bends, and that bending place is called the vertex. This happens to be the graph of y equals x squared. Okay, now just like we did with lines, we learned to recognize the uh, slope-intercept form. There's a form with quadratic functions that we want to learn how to recognize, and that's called the standard form. f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And these variables here, the a and the h and the k, all mean something important to the graph. First of all, let's look at the h comma k. The h and the k go together to make one point, and that point is the vertex. And also the a variable here controls whether the parabola opens up or down. And it also controls how quickly the graph gets wide. So here is our standard form again. And I just want to take a look at what A does for the graph. Now if A is positive, that is if A is greater than 0, then the parabola will open up. And if A is negative, that is if A is less than 0, then the parabola will open down. And the way we're going to remember this is positive people smile. So there you can see the parabola opens up. And negative people frown. So there you can see the parabola opens down. But there's more to it. A does more than just determine which way it opens. A also will determine how quickly the graph gets wide. So if A just the absolute value of a is greater than 1, that is if it's 2 or 3 or 4, then the graph is going to look rather skinny. But if a is less than 1, that is if a is a fraction, the graph is going to look wide. And so here I've got the graph of 2x squared, and you can see that it's skinnier than the original parabola we looked at. And here I've got the graph of 1 half x squared. So since a is a fraction, the graph is very wide. Now we're going to graph a parabola. Negative x minus 2 squared minus 3. And in this case, a is negative 1. And that tells us that the parabola opens down. And then our h comma k would be 2 comma negative 3. Now I know you might be tempted to think that it's negative 2, but remember the uh, standard form formula that we looked at before. It had x minus h. So this minus actually belongs to the formula, and this 2 is our h. So the vertex is 2 comma negative 3. And here I've got a dot at 2 comma negative 3 on the graph. That's where our parabola is going to bend. But now the problem is we don't know how wide the parabola should be. Should it be wider like this purple drawing or should it be skinnier like this green one? We know that um, A is negative 1 so we don't think it should be too skinny um, it only gets skinny when a is more than 1. Absolute value of a is more than 1. But here it's not, but, but exactly how wide should it be? Well, to tell us that, we need an additional point on the parabola. We need another point to help determine how wide to draw the parabola.
So here I'm just recopying all the, that we discovered on the last slide. Uh, we already had the H and the K. We already knew that A opened down. But now we are going to use the Y-intercept to give us an additional point to help us draw the graph. So remember to find a y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x. If we do that here, we let x equal 0, then we'll have negative 2 squared is positive 4, negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. So the y-intercept is negative 7, and I've plotted that here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, the thing is about parabolas, there's an invisible line running down the middle that's called the axis of symmetry. And the parabola should have the same shape on the left that it has on the right. So here you can see our axis of symmetry, this vertical line that's not really part of the graph, but it's an imaginary line that runs through the vertex. And look, because the graph because the point here is two spaces away from my line, see, one, two, then the point on the right side should be two spaces away from my uh, axis of symmetry, one, two. So I will put the second point right here where the green arrow is showing. So what I've got here is two spaces from the center to the left, and it's two spaces from the center to the right. And once I get those three points plotted, it allows me to connect the dots. And I just want to take a look at this one more time before we go on. Um, you can, so you can see that it's opening down. And just make sure that you understand where we got the vertex from and how wide this should be. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's graph another one. This time, f of x equals negative 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 5. So in this case, our a is negative 2. And because a is bigger than 1, absolute value, we know this graph is going to be skinny. And we know it's going to open downward. And I can tell by looking here that uh, the vertex will be 3 comma 5 and I know that minus sign belongs to the um, formula so H is 3 and here I've plotted my H comma K and now I need to plot my Y intercept So if I plug in 0 for uh, x to figure out the y-intercept, I find out that the y-intercept is negative 13. Well, that's, you know, that's okay, but my graph doesn't go all the way down to negative 13. So how am I going to graph negative 13 without really making my coordinate system much larger? Well, the answer is that I don't have to use that point. I could maybe plug in another point. So, suppose I just throw this one out because it happens to run off the page. And let's plug in something else. You know, if 0 didn't work, maybe 1 would work. So let's plug in x value of 1 and see if that helps. Well, if I plug in an x value of 1, then negative 2 squared makes positive 4. Negative 2 times positive 4 is negative 8. And negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. Well, I believe I can find that on my graph. So negative 3 is somewhere, you know, right in here. So, all right. So here I've plotted um, 1 comma negative 3, okay? And that's our, ver that's, well, that's not our vertex. Our vertex was... Um, 3 comma 5 and this is the second point and so now I'm going to draw my axis of symmetry right through the vertex and I want to take note of how many spaces it is 
from the point on my the side of my parabola to the center and it looks like two spaces again so it's going to be two spaces to the right side okay now I just have to connect the dots and there's our parabola and one more um, graph f of x equals x plus 2 squared minus 3. So a is 1 in this case. You can see you can see there's there's nothing written here so we know a is 1 and it's positive so this graph is going to open up and the vertex is negative 2 comma negative 3 so I've plotted that here. And now my y-intercept, if I plug in 0 for x, 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. So it looks like our y-intercept is 1, and I've plotted that here. And now I just have to find a point on the other side of the vertex. So we will use um, the axis of symmetry again and note that it happens to be two spaces again from the axis to the from the y-intercept to the axis so that it ought to be two spaces from the axis to the other side and now let's connect the dots and there's our parabola this time we're going to see if we can determine the equation just by looking at the graph now we can't do it a hundred percent. We can figure out H and K, but we will not be able to figure out A except that we do know its sign. We can see that the parabola is opening up, so I know that um, A should be positive. And let's figure out the vertex here. And the vertex for this parabola looks like four comma three, so H is four and k is 3 and look I cannot specify what a is but I know it's positive and even though this is not exact it is enough for you to to determine on a multiple choice problem um, to be able to pick out the correct equation because really all you have to worry about is the sign of a and the vertex make sure you get the vertex right we cannot determine a exactly but these questions would be asked in multiple choice forms, so you should be fine. And here's one more. Determine the equation. This one opens down, so we automatically know that its A will be negative, and the vertex is negative 4, 2. So I can write a negative A, x minus negative 4 becomes x plus 4 squared, and then it's plus 2. So this is our H and our K. Remember H always shows the opposite sign inside the function. Now not all functions are in standard form. It is possible for us to have a quadratic function that's in what's called general form. That is, we don't have that squared binomial. So in this case we won't be able to see the H and the K and we will have to um, calculated ourselves but I can tell you that the a works the same here as it does in standard form that is if a is positive we open up if a is negative we open down and how are we going to find the vertex well there's just this one little formula it's a very simple formula but you need to memorize it and the formula is for h so here it is h equals negative b over 2a and you make sure you memorize this and now to find k you take your h number and plug it into the f function so k equals f of h so if you cannot see h and k then you're going to use negative b over 2a to find h and then you're going to plug h into the function to find k and here's an example for us Let's find the vertex for f of x equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. 
Well, here's our A and our B and our C. We can see that this is not in standard form because we don't have a squared binomial. But H equals negative B over 2A, so H equals negative negative 6 over 2 times 1. H equals 3. And if we plug 3 in to the function, then we find out three that uh, F of 3 is 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5. In other words, 9 minus 18 plus 5 is negative 4. So it looks like our vertex is 3 comma negative 4. And let's see if we can um, graph this. Okay, so we're going to put our vertex at 3 comma negative 4, which will be right here. And then we're going to put our y-intercept at y equals 5 because if you plug in um, 0 for x, you're going to get 0 minus 0 plus 5. So the y-intercept is 5. Well, let's see. There. And now we need to um, draw our axis of symmetry, which goes right through the axis. And since I know that I can see that uh, we have three spaces between the axis and the y-intercept, we're going to have three spaces on the other side. So one, two, three. That'll be the other side of our parabola. And now we're just going to connect the dots. And it's not the prettiest parabola, but it about does the job. So that's all that we have to do on this skill. Hope that helps.